Alright, so before we get into this video, I just want to say it's uh, storming quite heavily outside my house, so I apologize if you hear any large, uh, uh, you know, loud cracks of thunder or anything, you know, you know that sort of stuff, see any big things of lightning. Uh, nothing I can do about that, but uh, hopefully it doesn't interfere too much with this video. Uh, in this video, though, uh, what we want to do is we want to start seeing how we can use some arithmetic operators in our queries here to uh, perform calculations on uh, data that we get back from our queries. Um, but right now, we don't really have much to work with uh, as far as um, values that we can you know, perform arithmetic operations on. Um, because we only really have this product code column with some integers in it, and there's not really... Uh, too many things we could do with that. And plus, it's just on the one column. I want to do some arithmetic, arithmetic operators across multiple columns here. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy, uh, highlight this row here, and copy this data to my clipboard. Just so Command C. And then uh, what I'm going to do here, uh, I'll lay out the steps here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the products table completely. I'm going to recreate it uh, with the two columns that we have here, plus some new ones that we'll see. And we're going to see a new uh, data type um, in, in the new table that we create. And then I'm going to populate uh, the table with uh, this data that we have now that I just copied to my clipboard, plus values for the new fields that we add. Now, Dropping the table is not something that you want to do normally because when you drop a table, you lose all the data inside that table uh, forever. There's no recovering that. Um, and there are ways to, you know, add columns to existing tables, but we're not quite there yet in this series. That's a, an advanced topic that we're going to cover later on. Um, but so right now we are going to drop the table and then just recreate everything. But I just wanted to be clear that you should not uh, do this this way uh, normally. This is fine for learning. Um, but not what you want to do uh, at a job or anything like that, or even on your own projects for that matter. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So I've copied this stuff to my clipboard here. I'm going to come back up to my SQL editor, and I'm just going to uh, say uh, I'm going to drop the products table here. Do you remember how to do that? So we'll just say drop uh, table, and then the name of the table is products, right? We'll go ahead and end that, and I'm going to run this query. And now we see that uh, that query successfully ran. We dropped the table. We still seem like we see it, and it's uh, still showing data in that table here. However, again, just as a reminder, if you hit refresh, poof, that table is gone. It no longer exists. So now uh, let's recreate that table. So now we'll say create table products, and we don't want to end here. Uh, what we want to do instead is open up some parentheses, and then put the um, set up the columns with their data types that we want to have in this table. So just like before, we want to do a name uh, field and that's going to be a var char and we'll keep it at 40 for now. So that's a name column of type var char. Uh, so up to length 40. Uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, product code, right? And we want that to be an integer. There we go. Okay, and now here is where we're going to see uh, some new data types here. So let's say uh, I want to see I want a price column here. So that price column Now what type is this going to be uh, if we pop over to our Postgres documentation here? Uh, if you look in chapter 8 at section uh, 8.1 there's uh, numeric types here and there's a, a table here showing all the types uh, the one we're going to use is numeric here uh, There's decimal 2 which is an alias for numeric uh, if memory serves me correctly here and down in this section here you can learn more about the numeric type and uh, there's a little uh, code block here that shows you uh, how you set this up so you say numeric and then uh, like our var char how we pass you know we set open parentheses and 40 inside of it this will take two arguments here precision and scale now precision and you can read more about these two uh, arguments in this paragraph here. Uh, precision represents the total number of digits that this is going to store, and that includes digits after uh, the decimal place too. So if you say five here for precision, 
uh, you know, you'll you'll get uh, five total digits is all you can store. And then you can set scale, the second argument here, or parameter, you can set that to say two, to say, hey, I know, you know, I set this up for five digits, two of those five I want to be, you know, after the decimal point. And you can see that here. So, uh, and they give an example here. So the number 235141 has a precision, precision of six, right? Because it's one, two, three, four, five, six digits long and a scale of four because four of those digits, four of the six are after the decimal here. Okay, so uh, going back to our table plus uh, example here, we're going to say numeric and then let's do for a price, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's say we can go, you know, up to like $1,000 here. So we'll say uh, six total um, uh, values, right? So uh, six in total, and then we'll just do two after the decimal. So that'll give us, you know, 1,000.00 uh, at the end of the day here. So that's what we're going to set up for price. Uh, the next one, uh, the next column I want to create is a column called, uh, let's say, max discount. Okay, so max discount, that's also going to be a numeric type. And let's say we want this to be, uh, we'll say three digits, and then a scale of two, or a precision of three, scale of two. So three digits in total, two of those can be after the decimal. So we can get, you know, like 0 0.35, you know, for like 35% uh, max discount here. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do here. These are the two new columns that we're going to add. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and hit run query, making sure I have my semicolon here to terminate my SQL query. So I'll hit run that. We see that the query uh, successfully executed and it created that table, uh, but we don't see it here. Again, if we come over here and hit the refresh and then highlight our products table now, we can see that we have uh, these four columns, name, product code, price, and max discount. So with that out of the way, now let's go ahead and add some uh, some rows, some data rows into this table here for some products. So I'm going to again say insert insert into uh, the products table. Okay, and then we need to list out the columns that we were going to uh, provide values for here. So let's say we're going to do everything here. We'll say name. Uh, product code, uh, price is the next one, and then max uh, discount, okay? And then now I'm gonna come on this next line here, whoops, and I'll say values, this represents the values that we wanna insert into the database, or into the uh, database table, rather. And then I'm gonna open up a set of parentheses here, and actually, uh, I'm going to come onto another line after this, whoops, I didn't mean to hit enter there and run that. I'm going to paste these values in here so that I can uh, use them to get us a head start here. So toothbrush, we're going to wrap that in a single quote again. Uh, that, we need to clear that up. So then we'll do a close in parenthesis there. Add our comma. Go to the front here. Give some space. Again, uh, wrap this soap bar. Uh, and, and let's just call this soap for now. So we'll say soap, comma, and then we'll fix that space there. And then close in parentheses, another comma. And I'll just go ahead and do this for the remainder of these. So sponge, fix that up. Close in parentheses, add our comma. Oops, glasses. All right, close that parenthesis. Wrap our remote here. Fix our space. Close in parenthesis, another comma. Shirt, we'll wrap that in a string. Fix that. Okay, and then let's go ahead and close that, or terminate this SQL statement with our uh, semicolon there. Now, if we were to run this, uh, it's going to insert the data properly for, you know, the name columns for these rows, and then the product uh, codes will have them. Uh, however, uh, no values will be added for here for any of these, uh, so we need to fix that now. So let's 
go ahead and do that. So right here, let's say a toothbrush, uh, I don't know, say $5 and a max discount of 0 0.05. How about that to get started? Uh, soap, we'll say, I don't know, 250 and then we'll do 0 0.05 on that one as well. Uh, sponge, we'll say $1.75 maybe. Uh, zero point, how about one zero on that? Uh, glasses, let's say glasses are ten dollars, max discount of zero point, mm, I don't know, fifteen maybe. So zero point one five there. The remote, uh, that's going to be an expensive remote. Let's say uh, nineteen ninety nine on the remote, that'll get a max discount of zero point two zero. And then the shirt, uh, it's going to be a $25 shirt. And then that's a max discount of, let's say, 0 0.40. Okay, so we have all of our new values for uh, these new columns in our database table. Let's go ahead and run our query now. Okay, and we can see that that query ran successful and uh, six rows were affected there. If we go over to our products table and we hit refresh, we can see that uh, we, if I expand these out a little bit, we see we have you know all four columns here now, um, and they are all populated just like we said to do. You know our toothbrush has a product code, it's got a price, it's got a max discounts, everything does. So cool. So we've got some new columns and we got new data to work with in those columns uh, for the uh, for each row here. So now let's look at how we can. Uh, use these this con these columns in arithmetic uh, expressions here. So now let's see, uh, for example, for all of the products that we have, let's see if we can figure out how much, uh, if, if the max discount was ap applied to each product, let's see how much, uh, you know, would be off from the listed price here for each product. So the way to do that is we can come back over to our SQL editor here and we'll use our select statement. So we'll say select, let's get the name so that we know what, uh, you know, how much uh, of a discount, like how much money off we're looking at here for the, uh, you know, for a certain product. So we get the name of the products. And then now what we want to do is we want to grab the price column. And then we want to say price times max discount. Okay. And then we want to, so we're saying to select these two things. And then we want to say from. Uh, what table we want to select those from so from the products table just like this okay so um, this is going to use the uh, multiplication this is the multiplication operator here it's going to multiply these two columns together and should give us back uh, the the total amount off of a, of a product's price here so if we run that we can see uh, down here below uh, what the uh, actual amount off of the price would be here for each product. So for a toothbrush, you could say 25 cents, uh, the bar of soap, uh, uh, 12 and a half cents, you know, sponge, 17 and a half cents, glasses, $1.50, so forth, so forth. So, um, and then let's, how about we do this as well? So after this, let's uh, actually just print out the price here and the max discount uh, by themselves so we can kind of see everything here. So if we run this query, we can see here, so let's see. Uh, for example, an easy one to look at for you know, the shirt here, if the shirt's price is $25 and the discount is 40%, you know, 40% of 25 is 10 here. So that's right. So all these calculations are you know, uh, being calculated appropriately from our database. Now, what you'll notice here is that this column here, um, you know, it's not really sure this column that's cal you know the result of our calculation it doesn't know what to call it you know so uh, how how can we get around this how can we provide some sort of name here so that we know what we're looking at in our results here well the way to do that is if we come at the end of this statement here and just after this if we use the as keyword so as now we can give this column a name and uh, it'll when we run the query again it'll use this name that we provide to the as keyword here to name this column for us. Uh, let's name this column, I don't know, amount off or something, you know, so we can just start there. So price times max discount as amount off. So if we run this query now, now we can see it used that 
uh, name that we provided to the as keyword here to give this column a name, which is a calculated value here that we've, you know, got together from the calculating, you know, two different columns, uh, or the values from two different columns. So there's other operators in here. We can do plus. So we'll just say, I'm not going to rename this column, but I'm just going to show you this, uh, you know, that we can use uh, addition here. So it added, you can see everywhere it's adding uh, these uh, decimals to the prices. We can do division in here. So run this. You can see it's doing the division there. Uh, we can do subtraction. So we run that. We can see it's subtracting those uh, decimals from there. Uh, there's other uh, operators as well that you can use, uh, but these are probably ones that you'll use most often. Um, but if you want to know more about the other operators, you can look here in Chapter 9, Functions and Operators. Uh, let's see, I believe it's Mathematical Functions and Operators. So yeah, addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, division. Uh, you have the modulo operator, uh, all sorts of things in here. So there's a table in here, and then, of course, there's information uh, below about these and, you know, inside uh, the table here as well. So uh, these are all ones that you can use. There's plenty more. You know, if you come over again to this functions and operations uh, section of the Postgres documentation, and MySQL has one as well, uh, you will see all sorts of things for all uh, different types of columns that you can use. So that's an you know, uh, example of some arithmetic operations you can use, and then how to use the as keyword to rename the columns that you're performing calculations on so that you can easily, you know, know what the results, like what the values are represented here instead of having that question mark, column question mark uh, label on them. Uh, so that's where we're going to end this one here. We'll see more of this as we go on through the course. Uh, but in the next video, we're going to look at some string functions and operators. So I will see you there.